worship you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for touching every person tonight. Thank you for the gifts of healing, the gifts of miracles, the gifts of the words of knowledge, the gifts of the spirit, the words of wisdom. Lord, we thank you that you have provided for all of our needs and whatever we need tonight, we thank you that you already have made it available to us. And I thank you that every person watching tonight, every person listening, every person within the sound of my voice is a full, fully recognized recipient to the gifts of your spirit and all of your gifts are available to each and every one of us. We receive, we receive, Lord, we receive. Thank you that you're watching over your word to perform it. Thank you that we're not just buying time until we can gather, but we're gathering online and walking in your power and getting better and getting stronger and getting wiser and getting healthier. And we thank you that you are present in our midst now. We're gathered in your name, Jesus. We thank you for the manifest presence of God at home in each church, home, home church connected to this body. We thank you for your tangible manifest presence in Jesus name. Amen. Well, welcome tonight. Thank you for joining me this Wednesday evening for our Bible study. We are live. And so if there's any hiccups technologically, um, technically, uh, just be patient with us as uh, you know, with technology, nothing really is ever perfect, but that's the beauty of being live and that's the beauty of being hip, right? Hip people at Life Changers Church, happy, imperfect people, imperfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody should uh, expect that or and, uh, or hold yourself to that kind of standard. Just be at peace and trust God to meet you right where you're at. Amen. He's faithful. Just like that song, I love that's one of my favorite songs and because it's all about his faithfulness in the good times and the bad times. God is faithful. If God's not faithful because we're faithful. It's good for us to be faithful, but God's not faithful to us because of our faithfulness. God's faithful to, to us because God is faithful to us because of his faithfulness. Amen. Well, tonight I'm going to talk about the gift of healing and I'm going to minister to you the gift of healing at the end of the service as well or throughout the service. But before I do, I want to invite you to give tonight and I want you to take a moment and really treat giving as a as an opportunity for you to sow and reap for you to sow into the lives of others, for you to plant seed into the lives of others and for you to reap a harvest of abundance in return so that you can give more to receive more, to give more, to receive more, to give more. You see how it works. You know, the Bible says freely we have received. So let us also freely give. There's nothing that I have in my life today that's good that didn't come from God. Sure, I might have earned it through making certain decisions and I might have worked for it in some ways. But in the end, at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day, for that matter, it all came from God, right? Every good and perfect gift comes from God, from the father. James chapter one, verse 17 says from the father with whom is no variation or shifting shadow, no shadow of turning. There's no variation. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. And whatever you have that's good in your life, it came from him as we freely have received. So let us freely give. Now, listen, I don't need you to give to keep the lights on. I don't need you to give to, you know, to pay the mortgage on the church. The church is paid for in full. One hundred percent. This building was thirty million dollars. And because of people like you and the people that are 
making these services happen and the people that went before you, some of you that are watching now, the early birds, the ones that got in, got in at the beginning and, and maybe they maybe God moved them on. Maybe they moved on. Maybe they needed to move on because I was very immature as a leader in the early years. But through their giving and through the giving of people over the years, we became a church that was not trying to let the tail wag the dog to try to keep the doors open. But we became a church that truly had our priorities in order and our priorities are people. And the reason why I want you to give is not so that I can keep the doors open, because frankly, <laughs> the doors are closed right now, <laughs> but we don't owe a penny on this building. And um, it's all been paid for by you, by God, by the grace of God. So thank you for those of you that have given over the years. When I ask you to give, when I invite you to give, it's for you. If God can get it through you, God can get it to you. I want you to think about that. If God can get it through you, he can get it to you. See, only you and God know. And even sometimes we don't even know ourselves about our own heart, but only God knows that you're going to be good with what he gives you and you're going to do what's right with what he gives you only. Only, only, only. Only God knows that. But I believe that about you. And I want to encourage you to truly receive and truly trust God and truly expect that when you give today, it is going to be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Poured into your bosom. A, a harvest that you can't even contain, the Bible says. Amen. Well, thank you for doing that. You can. There's several ways you can give today. If you if you're giving online is the best way. Just open up another window at life changers, life changers church dot com. If you're giving by text seven, seven, nine, seven, seven, um, you can follow any of the other ways of giving. You can give through the app, the life changers app. You can give through um, calling the phone number on your screen. You can give that way. Just to shout out real quick to some of you guys that are already tuning in. Thank you for joining me tonight. Our service is going to our service on Wednesday evenings now starts at seven. It always has. It's going to end at eight o'clock and uh, one hour of power because we're not waiting for people to come into the service because you're already in the service because you're at home having it right there. But uh, Carmelita, thanks for always being here. Amy, welcome. Lynn, welcome. Monica, thank you for joining tonight. Sydney, thank you for being here. Deborah, Theodora, Paul, man, so many of you guys. Lynn, I just can't thank you enough for staying connected to the church during this uh, crazy season that um, that our world has gone through. And um, and you guys have been faithful. Sandra, thank you. Irma, thank you. I know you're in Florida. Willie, I know you're here. Love you, man. Cindy, Monica, um, Lyle, Amy. God bless you, Lori. God bless you, Lori. Thanks for being here all these years. I think Lori was like the first employee that we ever hired in our church 20 something years ago, man, it's it's gone by fast. And she's she started when she was very young, very young, very young girl. Lori is right. <laughs> Ashley, she started when she was a child as well, or maybe was born here. I don't even know. She was born in the back of the church, not conceived in the back of the church, born in the back of the. church. All right. Now, don't go there now. All right. <laughs> uh, Shirley, welcome. And um, Theta. Wow. V Valerie. Uh, Eva, God bless you guys. God bless you, all, each and every one of you. I really appreciate you. Um, patience, man, I need some of that. I pray for that. I said the other day, Lord, I need patience and I need it now. Of course, he didn't give it because the way I asked, but um, just a joke. All right, uh, Carol, welcome. And uh, again, Barbara, Jeannie, uh, Donna, God bless you guys. Wow. Um, I'm way behind. You guys are way ahead of me. But thank you, Judith, for joining us and Sam and um, and all of you. Listen, I want to talk about the gift of healing. Before I do, I want to remind you about the power of connection, the power of connection. Um, and let me just say something about that. Uh, the power of connection. One of the worst things that can happen um, in your home, I mean, outside of tragedy, the worst thing that can happen technically is for you to lose power, right? You lose power 
um, in your home, if it's the middle of summer, you got no power for air conditioning. If it's in the middle of winter, you got no power for heat. Um, losing power is uh, is really uh, something that none of us want to experience. One of the reasons why we added a generator to our church facilities is because so often the power would go out on a Saturday night and we wouldn't know if it was coming back on a Sunday morning. We had a few of those and we had a lot of near misses. We had a lot of scares that we wouldn't be able to have church without power. I mean, obviously there's ways around it, but um, with a generator, we never have to think about it. If the power goes out, if ComEd goes out, if lightning strikes, our generator goes boom right on. You don't even notice that we went from power plant to power generator. And um, and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because if you don't have power, you can't do the basic things that we all are used to doing, whether it's eating uh, food out of a refrigerator that's been powered by electricity or uh, making a, a bagel out of a you know, with a toaster that's powered with electricity to using your, your hair curler to curl your hair because you because no salons are open. Uh, you need electricity to, to blow dry your hair. You need electricity. There's something about being able to connect to the power source, right? And the church is the power source for us as believers that the body of Christ is where the power flows through. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the gift of healing as well tonight. But um, but the power flows through the body. The power flows through the body. Do You know, the Bible says when we lay hands on the sick, they they shall recover. Why? Because there's power. The power of God goes through our physical our physical bodies and spiritual and emotional power flows through and physical power too, in many cases, flows through the body of Christ. Saving power flows through the body of Christ as we witness to others. Healing power flows through the, through the body of Christ when we lay hands on the sick. Um, the power of fellowship, fellowship power flows through the church as we stay connected. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church when the church is united, when the church is unified. It doesn't mean we're not going to have differences, but we're not going to have divisions. You can have differences without having divisions. You could be a Democrat or a Republican and be more than welcome in this church, no matter what your political position is, as long as you're not hurting other people. Right. And that is the power of unity with diversity. And the church should always have diversity and the church should always welcome people of all backgrounds and all races and no one should be discriminated against all ages. No one should be discriminated against, not in the church. That's what makes the church powerful, that we stay connected and we stay unified. Even if we have differences on some things, the most important things we have, we have a connection about and we have agreement about, right? That Jesus Christ is the savior. He's the Lord. It is finished on the cross. We live by faith in the love of God, the goodness of God, the grace of God. The scriptures are the authority and inspired word of God. Amen. See, those are the things that we share and are common in and that we all want to be pleasing to God. And the church is the most powerful force on earth that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. So stay connected even in this crisis. We don't have the exact date when churches are going to open up in our community. I could pick a date, but I don't want to just guess and I'm not in a hurry to force anything. I don't want a false start. Some of you heard me on my daily um, daily bread broadcast that um, we don't want a false start. When you have a false start, you go in a football game. If you remember football um, used to be played a long time ago, a little thing made out of leather and people bouncing heads and banging heads against each other. Remember that game? It's called football, I think. But anyway, the point is, is that if one of the offensive linemen jump ahead of the of the ball being hiked, right? It's called a um, it, it's it's called a false start. You and you have to go back five yards. You have to move the ball back five yards because of a false start. Well, I don't want our church to have a false start. I don't want us to, st to start and then um, something gets worse to start. And then people aren't wanting to come and people don't, aren't, don't feel ready yet. Now, when we announce it, I'm going to invite everybody to come, but I'm also going to invite everybody to stay right where you are, too, because there's not going to be any pressure. There's not going to be any shame. There's not going to be anybody to make you feel bad or condemned if uh, if you don't feel you're ready. But I believe we're going to pick the, the time when we really do feel 
and is a common sense of readiness. And even for some, if it's not yet, that's OK. The Bible says, let everyone be convinced in their own mind, in their own mind. So I got to be convinced in my mind. You got to be convinced in your mind. We can have differences without divisions. Amen. So hope that makes sense. The power connection is so important. And I think we, we gave right. Everybody took took a moment and you gave. I, I bless your seed. I thank you for supernatural increase, Lord, in each person's gift and each person's seed. In case I didn't pray that before, I want to make sure to to um, work that out with the Lord for you. I'm believing on your behalf for supernatural increase. God told me to believe for it. And so I'm believing for increase first and foremost in your life then in the life of the church. But it starts in the life of the church member. Supernatural increase is coming to you in Jesus name. In fact, a really quick testimony. Um, somebody wrote in and said in April I was furloughed from my job of 22 years. Weeks went by with no income. At first I was devastated. I asked God, what did I do wrong? God opened my eyes to Job 22, verse 28. You shall decree a thing and it will be established for you and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. I began to decree his will and his word daily. I decreed wisdom, favor, abundance, protection. You name it. I said it. I contacted life changers and a staff member helped me apply for unemployment. One of our staff members helped this this person apply for unemployment within 24 hours. I received unemployment back pay and have been able to keep up with my bills. I then began planting financial seeds. I went from giving money in order to get a return to getting excited about giving. I began to decree his word, ordering angels to move based on his word. And things began to move in my life at such a quick pace. Even my marriage, which had been difficult for many years, has improved over the last six months as well. Praise God. I'm still decreeing God's word, and I know that he will take a bad thing and turn it into good in this earth. That's exactly right. And just as God did this for this man, God can do it for you as well. Please know that we're praying for you and we're here for you. You can um, receive just as you're giving in the same way that we invite you to give. We also invite you to receive. And um, I want you to know our food pantry is open every day, Monday through Friday. Our regular office hours are open and you can get to one of our food pantries either at our Hoffman Estates campus from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m or Monday through Friday or our Chicago campus downtown Tuesday and Saturday 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Tuesday 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is this will be on our website. I, I'm pretty sure or you can call if you ever have a question. Call 847-645-9100 or email us at online at changing lives dot org. Don't forget, we have kids and youth online experiences as well. It's better than ever. Our church is better than ever. We're really helping more people than we ever have. We're reaching more people than we ever had have than we've ever had. This past Sunday was the second um, largest audience that we've ever had, largest gathering, um, the most people tuned in and connected uh, that we had since uh, besides Easter it was our second lar second largest of the year. And I believe because we are truly the church, whether we're meeting in the temple, in the building, in the sanctuary or whether we're meeting in the homes. And right now we're meeting in homes, but um, soon we'll be meeting back in our sanctuary. But let's savor and enjoy one another and encourage one another and trust God to walk in his will and his purpose in one another's lives. Now, let's not just be buying time to get to reopening. Let's trust and believe that in this moment, God's going to do something special in your life. I'm believing for that for you, and I'm going to pray for your healings in a few moments. OK, so let me get into this teaching. The gift of healing, the gift of healing. Now, let's start, if you don't mind, in first Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse seven says, but each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. So let me teach you a little bit about the gift of healing. And then we're going to pray whatever emotional healing, physical healing, financial healing, relationship healing. Um, 
he says, but each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. So the gifts of the spirit are for everybody. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit and to another, the word of knowledge, according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit. So technically it's gifts, plural of healing, because there's more than one gift of healing. There's many ways in the Bible that God brings healing through people. And uh, we could go over all those. But let me just finish this passage here to another faith by the same spirit, to another word of knowledge, right? Faith, gifts of healing by one spirit and, and to and to another, the effecting of miracles. So the gift of miracles and to another prophecy and to another, the discerning of spirits and to another various kinds of tongues and to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. Now, if you remember one, it says just as he wills. Remember when the man came to Jesus and he said, Lord, if you're willing, he, the man with the withered hand, if you're willing, you can you can make me whole. And Jesus said, I'm willing be made whole. Right. He said, if you're willing, you can make me whole. And he said, I am willing. So we need to understand when he says as the spirit wills or as he wills, God wills. The question is. Do you embrace, do you accept that it's his will to bless you with the gift of healing? Jesus paid for it on the cross by his stripes were healed, right? So what we have to do is we have to allow our faith to be focused not on people's experiences, because there's going to be a lot of people that say, well, I tried that healing stuff, but it didn't work. I had them lay hands on me, but it didn't work. I had somebody anoint me with oil, but it didn't work. See, we're going to have to make up our minds. Are we going to believe only what we see? Or are we going to believe what God says, regardless of whether we see it? Remember on Sunday, we talked about how Jesus said to Mary, didn't I say to you, if you believe you will see the glory of God. if you believe you will see. So if you base your faith on what you see in other people's lives, that undermines your faith, it pulls the rug out from underneath you because we walk by faith, not by sight. God doesn't want us arriving at the conclusion of faith because we saw it in somebody else's life or we didn't see it. God wants us to arrive at the conclusion of faith in his healing gifts because he said so. Because we take him at his word, because when somebody tells you they're going to do something for you, nine times out of ten, you believe them. But when God says he's going to do something for you, nine times out of ten, we doubt him. And we need to have that reverse, you know, because God's more faithful than people. Isn't it funny how people can let you down and you'll still believe them? Somebody will say in a marriage, I'll never do that again. I'll never hurt you like that again. And then they do. And you believed them. It's not because you were bad for believing them. It's, they were bad for, you know, promising something they couldn't keep or not fulfilling something that they should have prop they should have kept. Right. But God's not like that. Not one of his promises has ever failed. And not one of his promises is going to start failing with you. You're not going to be the exception to God's faithfulness. You're going to be the recipient of God's faithfulness. So these gifts of healing, notice he uses the plural gifts because there's healing through the laying on of hands. There's healing through the anointing of oil. There's healing through the prayer of faith. There's healing through doctors and medicine. There's healing through proper nutrition and proper diet and I believe that we all need to take a look at that in our lives, not to condemn us and not to feel browbeat, but to recognize that our bodies are carrying God's grace to this world. And we want our bodies to be healthy so that we can continue to bring Jesus to others through our lives. I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to go to heaven prematurely. I don't want to go to heaven because I didn't take care of myself. And I know that most of us, we feel that, but we also you know, we're self loathing sometimes, right? When we eat something that we shouldn't have eaten and we eat more than we should have and we start hating ourselves, just forgive yourself. 
forgive yourself and thank God that he is the God of second chances and third chances and fourth and fifth and sixth chances. He's not a God, a rigid God. Well, you know what? You can only get healed this way. God's not rigid. He's generous. That's why he gives us a plethora. <laughs> Do you like that word? Big word for me. But uh, <laughs> maybe for you, it's not. But um, he gives us this this plethora, this array, this this variety, this abundance of methods and paths to his healing power. Because I believe that it's God healing me by drinking a lot of water just as much as it's God healing me through the laying on of hands. I believe it's just as much God healing me by speaking the word out of my mouth. It's just as much God healing me as it is for a doctor to help me recover from something. You see, healing comes from God. Every good and perfect gift is from the father. There's no variation. If you if you say if you buy into the belief that some preachers share, and I don't condemn anybody over this, but I want us to make sure we get it right with the right logic spiritually and common sense is that some people have bought into a belief that God chooses to heal some people, but he chooses to to bless others with sickness, to teach them a lesson. And if we look at our natural circumstance, sometimes it actually might feel like that's what's happening. But if we look at Jesus life, it's impossible for that to be happening. You know why? Because if it's God's will to make somebody sick, to teach them a lesson, then we would have seen Jesus at least once make somebody sick. If we believe that it's possible for him to heal, then we only have to see Jesus one time heal and then we know it's possible. And if it's possible for Jesus to make somebody sick, we just need to see him do it once in the life of Jesus, in the life of Jesus, not talking about what happened in the old covenant because they were under the law and they were under the curse because of Adam and Eve's disobedience. But I'm talking about in Jesus life. We'd have to find somebody. Well, what about when Jesus said um, it's not it's not this this man's sin or his parents sin that made him blind, be born blind, but for the glory of God. You say, isn't that wasn't that God's will to make him blind? No, it was God's will to heal him. The glory of God was not in the blindness. The glory of God was revealed in the healing. If there would have been no healing to the blind man in John chapter nine, where that is, if there had been no healing to the blind man, there would have been no glory given to God. Or if if being blind gave glory to God, then Jesus would have just left him in that condition and said, you know what, you're giving glory to me in your blind condition. So just stay that way, because that gives me glory. But what did Jesus do? He healed him. I'm not trying to make an argument. I know that it might sound like that sometimes, but it's because sometimes I think Christians, they don't think logically through scripture. Scripture is very logical. Scripture is not it's not mystical. It's not. The Bible says that God's word is is for the simple. God's word is for the humble. And we only need to see him making one person sick. To believe that sickness is from God. But if we see him healing everybody <laughs> that he laid hands on and everybody that came to him and everybody that touched him, then we're going to have to go ahead and and just accept it that I believe you're my healer. I believe. I believe you're my healer. Make him your healer today, just like you made him your savior. He was already savior, but you made him your savior when you accepted him as such. He's already the healer. I want to encourage you to make him your healer tonight and receive that precious gift of healing. I'll show you. I'll show you. But just so you know, throughout the Gospels in the book of Acts. Jesus disciples healed people through prayer, through the laying on of hands, through anointing oil, through the power of their words. Peter and John told the 
the lame beggar outside the temple in Acts three. What we do have, we give to you in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. And he was healed. Philip preached the gospel to Samaria and healed those that were paralyzed or lame in Acts chapter eight, verse four through eight. Peter tells a paralyzed man named Aeneas to get out of bed and walk. And he does in Acts chapter nine, verse thirty two through thirty five. Peter prays for a woman named Dorcas and she comes back to life in Acts chapter nine, verse thirty six through forty three. Paul has handkerchiefs taken from him and put on sick people in Acts chapter 13 and they're healed. In Acts chapter five, people try to get into Peter's shadow. And those that got in his shadow were healed. Wow, this is the great doubter, the great denier. Peter, the one that doubted Peter, the one that denied the Lord, Peter that denied the Lord three times before it was 5 a.m. before the cock crowed. Woo. The one who sank in the water and later people were trying to get in his shadow just to be healed. Why? Because of the gifts of healing. Because God uses broken vessels. God uses imperfect vessels like Peter, like Paul, like you, like me. Because if it were up to our holiness, Peter said it when they raised up that man, that beggar at the beautiful gate in Acts three, he said, man, he said, don't look at us like it was our religion or our holiness or our piety. He said, don't don't think it's our piousness or our piety or piety or holiness that raised this man up. No, it's the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is why he's walking and that is why he's leaping and that is why he's praising God. Amen. I want to take you to a scripture in Mark, chapter five, verse twenty seven. It says there was a woman. Let me just let me just get this out. And then we'll pray. Still with me. Thank you. In um, Mark, chapter five, one of my favorite miracles in the Bible was the woman with the issue of blood, right? In verse twenty five, she had it for twelve years. She was hemorrhaging. She was bleeding. And it says in verse 26, she had endured much at the at the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not any better, not helped at all. Now, sometimes doctors help and sometimes they can't. In this case, they couldn't. It doesn't mean they were bad. It just means they were insufficient. And it says she had actually grown worse in verse 26. And then in verse 27, after hearing about Jesus, I love that. I love those words after hearing about Jesus. After hearing about Jesus, she didn't hear about religion. She didn't hear about laws. She didn't hear about rules. She didn't hear about doctrine. She heard about Jesus. And when she heard about Jesus, boy, I wish we would just talk more about Jesus. I wish we would hear more about Jesus, because when you hear more about him, you're hearing more about his love. You can't go through the Bible very easily in the life of Jesus without bumping into his love, without bumping into his compassion, without running in collision head first into some blessing and some act of his mercy and kindness and warmth and love and forgiveness and compassion and provision. That's our Jesus. That's the Jesus she heard about. She didn't hear about some weak Jesus that couldn't heal the sick. She heard about the Jesus that was raising the dead. She heard about the Jesus that was healing the sick. She heard about the Jesus that had raised the paralyzed man. She heard about the Jesus that the friends came in in Mark chapter two and they couldn't get into the house. So they went up on the roof, busted the roof open and put him down through the roof. And Jesus saw their faith and said, my son, rise and be healed. That's the Jesus that this woman heard about. And I don't want us listening to another Jesus other than this Jesus that saves the lost, heals the sick, forgives the sinner, loves the unlovable, reaches the unreachable, transforms the unchangeable. 
when she heard about this Jesus. She came up in the crowd behind him. And she touched. His robe. One translation uses the word cloak. One translation uses the word robe. One translation uses the word garment. She touched the hem of his garment, for she thought if I just touch his garments, I shall get well. If I just touch, she thought, you know, I looked this uh, verse up in a few different translations and I found something very interesting that in the New American Standard, it says, for she thought if I just touch his garments, I'll be made well. But in the contemporary English version, it says, and she had said to herself, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. I want you to think about that. She said to herself, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I say to you. It doesn't matter what the devil says to you. It doesn't matter what other people say to you. What matters is what are you saying to yourself? Because she said to herself, if I can just touch his garment, I'll be healed. Wow, the simplicity of that. Well, what if I'm still smoking? What if I'm still cussing? What if I'm... she just said to herself, if I just touch his clothes, his garment, the edge of his robe, I'll be made well, I'll be healed. You see how simple this is now? I want you to see something. Verse twenty nine says, and immediately. The flow of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed. You know the difference. It's one thing to say I receive it by faith and that's good and that's important. But this girl felt it in her body. <laughs> this this old gal, she had spent all the money she had. You imagine when you're out of money, all you can have is faith. You know, some of the reason why we learned how to live by faith is because we had to. We had no money. I mean, I remember being on. I remember having the last five dollars to my name and having a kid and one on the way. And sometimes you, you live by faith because that's all you got. You know, you live by faith because you're kind of forced to. But like the Bible says, not a bad idea since he's the God who raises the dead. Right. But she man, she had she had spent all her money. She ran out of all the money and she got worse. But she just said, man, if I just touch his garment. Are you hearing this? I'm going to be made well. I'm going to be healed. And immediately the flow of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body says she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And now notice what happens in verse 30. Immediately, Jesus perceiving in himself that power proceeded from him had gone forth. Now, notice he it says um, the New Living Translation. Listen to this. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? Let me ask you something. The God who knows everything had to ask who touched my robe? Why? Why did he ask? Well, he was 100 percent God and 100 percent man all at the same time, right? This is the man in him saying, who touched my garment? He felt. He knew healing power had gone out from him, but he didn't know who it went to. She put a demand on his power. She placed a demand. You know, when you plug your hair dryer in to the power outlet and turn it on, you know what you're doing? You're putting a demand on the source of power. You're placing a demand on the power. 
If you just leave the hairdryer there and you got wet hair and you're just looking at the hairdryer and you're looking at your hair in the mirror and you're looking at the hairdryer and you're looking at your hair in the mirror and you're wondering, why isn't it working? Because you haven't put a demand on the source of power. So you got to put a demand on it. I'm not saying demanding God to do something that he didn't say he would do. I'm saying placing a demand like when you when you put the foot when you put your foot on the gas pedal. Anybody do do that lately? I did that the other day. Man, there was nobody around. Man, I was going fast. I was testing that thing. Had to take it in after that. Uh, something wasn't right at 150 miles an hour. Something wasn't going right. Just kidding. Um, it was 130. But don't do that at home, kids. Um, confess my sins before you guys. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. Amen. Amen. Am I covered now? Am I good? OK. Um, when you put your foot on the gas pedal, you know what you're doing? You're not yelling at the car. Give me more speed. You're placing a demand on its power. You're placing a demand on its power. See, she placed a demand on his power by saying to herself, if I just touch his garment, I'll be made, I'll be made whole. So to the person who's I get it. We argue. I get it. I get it. We try to talk ourselves out of it through reasoning like, well, God heals only those who he picks. He's sovereign and his to decide, he decided to heal some people and some. But he didn't even know. Why would he say we got to take the word as it's written? Right. And he says, who touched me, who touched my garments and looking around, look at what it says. He said, somebody touched me and the disciples said, you see the multitudes pressing in on you, Lord, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman was fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her. She came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her daughter, because that's what he thinks of you, daughter, son, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Wow. Well, there's so much here that it's hard for me to unpack all of this in uh, in the next 14 minutes, but I'm going to do my very best and I'm not going to spend longer than that. And if we if we don't get through it all, we'll get to it next time. But to understand how she was able to touch the hem of his garment and be healed. She understood something. She knew, number one, that there was power in Jesus. And she knew, number two, most people knew that the tassels of the robe that she's talking about, the tassels of his robe were weaved in such a way that it represented 613 laws because there are 613 mosaic laws. And so what they would, you know, the the Jewish people, they would touch those and kiss those and pray with those. And they were those tassels that had those 614 knot knots or notches in them represented the 613 commandments in the Old Testament. There's 10 that we know of, but there's actually 613 if you go through the scriptures. And she knew that those tassels represented the law because they they all knew at that time in that season, they knew that the fringes under the Mosaic law, God instructed the people regarding the corners or the fringes of their garments. Jews were to make tassels, according to Numbers chapter 15, they were to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a cord of blue on the tassel of each corner. I used to have one of these these shrouds. You can you can look these up and see for yourself. There's blue tassels and blue and white on each corner as a reminder that they were God's people called to keep his commandments. Numbers chapter 15, verse 37 through 41, representing 613 commandments. So when she touches his garment, when she touches his tassels, she's touching the one's clothes and the one's tassel who is fulfilled the whole law. She's touching the one who has fulfilled all righteousness. 
And when she touches the one who has fulfilled all righteousness, healing flows because healing doesn't flow. If there's any disobedience in the person who's looking for it, but because of Jesus obedience, we're saved through his obedience and we are healed through his obedience because he fulfilled all righteousness, fulfilled all 613 commandments. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. He fulfills the law and then dies. As a sinless man, having fulfilled all the laws, he is able to absorb the curse, absorb sin and become sin and become the curse and become sick, taking our stripes, I should say, takes it all on himself and becomes punished on our behalf so that by his stripes we are healed. You have every right to healing, not because you fulfilled all 613 commandments, but because Jesus fulfilled all 613 commandments on your behalf. So you have every right to the blessing of healing now and every right to be free from the curse of sickness and disease. It's your right as a child of God because Jesus fulfilled it so much so that that's why it says back in. Um, look over in Mark, chapter one, real quick. In verse nine, Jesus goes to be baptized and John the Baptist says, I shouldn't be baptizing you. But verse nine, it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth and he was baptized by John in the Jordan, not Michael Jordan, but the Jordan River, in case you're wondering. And immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the spirit descending like a dove and a voice from heaven said, you are my beloved son in you. I'm well pleased. I want you to see in Matthew's version of this, I think it's Matthew, chapter three, John the Baptist says, Lord, I I'm not worthy. I have need to be baptized by you. And Jesus says in verse 15 of Matthew three, permitted at this time for in this way, it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus fulfills all righteousness here. And guess what righteousness contains? Let me show you just so that nobody's wondering about this. Malachi, chapter four, verse one, it says, for behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace and all the arrogant and every evildoer will be chaff. And the day that is coming will set them ablaze says the Lord of hosts so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But you for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Notice what he calls this. The son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Jesus is the son of righteousness. Jesus has fulfilled all righteousness and Jesus has made you and me the righteousness of God. And therefore we have healing in his wings. The word wings there got this now. The word wings there is the word tassels, tassels, corner of the robe. See, this is what this woman knew and what she understood. If I just touch the tassel of his garment, if I just touch the wing of righteousness, I will be healed. Why? Because the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. He said, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow. Under the wings of the almighty. One translation says under his wings, we seek refuge. The wing is the corner of the tassel that represents the law is fulfilled all righteousness is fulfilled. And by laying hold of Jesus righteousness, there's healing in his wings. Are you ready to receive your healing? It's in his wings. What are his wings? His gifts of healing, his gift of righteousness carries with it healing. 
ought not this woman? Being a daughter of Abraham, bound by Satan these long years, shouldn't she be healed no matter what day it is, since she's a daughter of Abraham? Oh, daughter, he said to the woman with the issue of blood, daughter, your faith has made you well. What is her faith in her faith? was in Jesus fulfilling all righteousness so that in his wings there would be healing for her in his wings. There's healing for you as well. I want to pray for you no matter what it is. Physical, emotional, financial or relational. I am believing God for your healing tonight that there's going to be a miracle and a healing. Now you say, what if we pray and nothing happens? It's not possible. It's not possible for us to pray and nothing happen. Now it's possible for us to pray and you not see anything right away, but it's not possible for us to pray and nothing happens, because if two shall agree about anything they ask, it shall be done. Now we simply have to learn how to receive by faith. And the Bible says in Mark, Chapter 11, verse 24, therefore, whatsoever things you pray for, when you pray, believe that you have received them and they shall be granted to you. All things which you pray for and ask, believe that you have received them and they shall be granted you our part is to pray and ask, believe we have received. And it's God's part to grant it to us and he'll do his part. Let's do our part. What's our part to believe, (laughs) to believe what to believe you have received. There's a difference between believing you have received and believing you will receive one day. You see the difference? I believe I have received. I haven't. I don't see it, but I believe I've received it. Boom shakalaka. Now God can do his part. We already did his part by providing for it on the cross. Jesus, by his stripes, were healed, right? Isaiah 53, first Peter 2, 24. But what I want you to see is that our part is not to try to finish what he started. Our part is to believe that he finished what he started and to accept this gift of healing today. So let's pray together and let's agree together And let's do it the Jesus way, which is for whatever you pray and ask, believe you have received it and it'll be granted to you. Come on now. Let's believe we have received. Right now, just pray this with me out loud. Just say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus has fulfilled all righteousness. Jesus became sin on the cross. Jesus took my sickness and disease. Jesus became a curse for me for cursed is the one that hangs on the tree and by his stripes say that by his stripes, I'm healed. Therefore, tonight I agree with my pastor. Come on, I'm agreeing with you. Agree with me. Say that tonight. I agree with Dick out. Call me whatever you want. Agree with me tonight. I'm agreeing with you. Say, I agree with that guy in the black sweater. I agree with that dude in Jesus name and say, I believe we ask for healing in my body. We ask for healing in my emotions. Come on, say that we ask for healing in my finances. We ask for healing in my relationships. And I believe that I receive what I've asked for. In Jesus name, say that I believe I receive what I've asked for in Jesus name. If you're not, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, I just thank him right now. Just thank him. But I can't leave tonight without thinking of the souls that are not sure they're going to heaven when they die. I want you to pray right now with me. If you're not sure you're going to heaven when you die, or you want to be saved. Pray this out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Pray that out loud. I believe the blood of Jesus cleanses me 
from all my sins. And from this moment forward, I'm a child of God. Just say that from this moment forward, I'm a child of God. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, let me know. I'm going to send you a book, The Power of a New Life to help you get started. The firm foundation of the Christian life is in this book. I'm sending it to you as my gift to you. No, no ifs, ands or buts. This is my gift to you. OK, you don't have to take it, but it's yours for free if you want it. And it'll really help you. And um, congratulations for accepting Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord. For those that started out today sick, I want you to declare by his stripes, I'm healed by his stripes. I'm healed. You say, what if I say that you shall decree a thing? And it shall be so by his stripes, I'm healed. Say it again by his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Amen. Now just lift your hands and just thank him. We just thank him for a moment and let's just go out and worship the Lord Jesus for one more moment together. Come on, let's worship him. Great is your faithfulness and great His faithfulness. I don't want you to ever forget it either. I'm going to remind you of it tomorrow at our uh, daily bread. And I can't wait to see you then. Thanks for being here. I love you guys. Call us if you need anything. We are the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. I love you. God bless.